The empiricist will tell us that empiricism is the best way to understand the world, but do they have empirical evidence for that? Empiricists will tell us that observation is accurate and trustworthy, but how could they prove this without begging the question? There is no empirical test that proves the validity of empiricism. Proving the validity of empiricism through empirical means would be like using one ruler to measure the accuracy of another ruler. You would first have to presuppose the accuracy and trustworthiness of the first ruler to have confidence in your conclusions, but that would result in a circular argument that tells you nothing about reality. In other words, you must begin with a faith-based presupposition that your empirical method is telling you something accurate and trustworthy about reality, but unless you know ultimate reality, you could not validate empiricism empirically. If you really wanted to validate the truth of empiricism empirically, one would need to step outside of empiricism, outside of the domain of finite measurement and observations, to see if it's reflective of ultimate reality. But if you cannot do this, you have no way to verify empiricist conclusions and no path to prove that a not-God model interpretation of reality is true. Always remember that science is a human interpretation of the phenomenal world the world as it appears to human senses. Science is temporal, provisional, contingent, and imperfect. And the knowledge it gathers is through the empirical method of calculations, measurements, and observations. Science can only tell us about empirical reality, that small spectrum that we can measure and observe through our fallible human senses. Science is not in the business of ontology, only provisional models that can never be ultimately verified. And this is why, when an atheist tells you there is no evidence for God, they can only be referring to the empirical domain that we can measure and observe and therefore are not addressing any questions about existence. In fact, science is an anthropomorphic interpretation of reality, one that panders to our human senses and is therefore species-specific and cannot tell us what reality is. It can only explore a small sample of the empirical domain through the finite empirical method of calculations, measurements, and observations, and can never know anything beyond this. For example, an alien civilization with different senses may observe the world in ways unperceivable to us. And this is why I say science as we know it is an anthropomorphic interpretation of reality, one that panders to our human senses and is therefore species-specific and does not necessarily tell us what reality actually is. I would say that anyone who attempts to explain the universe must explain its mathematical nature, its rational order, Atheism has often staked a claim to being the ultimate expression of rationalism. It is nothing of the kind. It is the fundamental enemy of rationalism that believes in what it can see and measure. And that's why it reaches atheistic conclusions, because it is concluding things based upon incomplete data. If you agree that the universe is a rational, comprehensible place, organized according to rules that can be rationally grasped, then it should be approached from a strictly rationalist angle. And this means that the rational mathematical laws and order that underpin our world are based in a rational source. But if you're atheist that rejects the existence of a rational ontology because such a thing is not amenable to the scientific method, then you'll be forced to adopt the most irrational presuppositions in support of your not-God model interpretation of reality, and you'll need to provide the demonstrable evidence showing how haphazard, random, accidental, undirected, and purposeless forces brought our world together. To picture how that scenario is even possible, we could use the disaster of the Space Shuttle Challenger as an example. In 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger blew apart 73 seconds after liftoff, killing all astronauts on board. Tons of money and some of the greatest minds worked together to get the calculations, equations, and science right. But one error proved fatal to the whole system. One error proved catastrophic and the Space Shuttle Challenger was no more. I point out this disaster to draw your attention to the fact that if things are not precise at the foundational level, the errors and contradictions will cause the whole system to self-destruct. This also applies to the universe. Just one error, one inaccuracy, 
One contradiction and the error would be fatal to the whole system, and we would have chaos instead of a cosmos. The fact that there exists a cosmos tells us that the fundamental and foundational calculations were mathematically precise. One error, one miscalculation, and the error would spread throughout the whole system resulting in rapid self-destruction. So therefore, whatever caused the universe, one thing is clear. It was accurate, precise, and made no fatal error. And it's here we clearly see a rational mathematical agency at work. Now the atheist will come along and tell us that these precise mathematical calculations were the unintended byproduct of haphazard lucky chance rolls of the dice in a cosmic casino of atheistic probabilities. And I understand that they have no choice, because once you reject rationality and intelligence as the causal agent, you are committed to explaining existence by appealing to non-rational causes and processes to fit in with an atheistic explanation of reality. Instead of an unobservable God, the atheist will invoke an infinite array of unobservable universes to explain the extraordinary existence of our world. In essence, this explanation is championed by the atheist because it invokes lucky chance accident for the configuration of our world and serves as a God replacement. In short, the atheist is perfectly willing to consider infinite unobservable universes in a multiverse, but under no circumstances will he consider an unobservable creator. He has no problem with unobservables, only with God. But the multiverse explanation has only kicked the can further down the road. It ultimately explains nothing, and the materialist is back where he started. What finely tuned this multiverse-making machine that he invokes? Where did it come from? What is its cause? Why does it exist? What is its sufficient reason? Well, don't ask the atheist. He has no idea. I'm Paul Ross, and thanks for listening.